Dear friends and members of the Gideon Planetarium Observatory, dear uh, friends and the special guests, good evening from uh, me, George Trigia, the director of the Gideon Planetarium Observatory and the National Coordinator for the United Nations World Space Week. A great honor to be with us today. Uh, and uh, this recorded uh, session will be uh, posted online for everyone to watch at any time of your preference. Today we have some very, very special guests to celebrate with us the opening ceremony of the World Space Week 2023 for Cyprus. We have uh, Dr. Lagata from the Analog Astronaut Training Center and uh, two of our Analog Astronauts. And uh, actually we are three. Something happened to one of them. She would be with us on another session. We will talk about our lady and the last one as well. And um, we are here to celebrate the West Space Week and also talk about the benefits and the significance of our beloved uh, initiative of uh, the beloved initiative for Agatha and her team of the Analog Astronaut Training Center in Krakow. So as you see on the picture, my screen. This is the official uh, poster for the World Space Week and the theme this year is Space and Entrepreneurship and you can find all about it uh, on this website astronomycyprus.eu. There are links on the first page which will lead you to the World Space Week uh, page. So you can follow all our sessions. We already had a session last week, last Tuesday, and we talked about the cosmonauts, three of the cosmonauts that, who left, uh, who used to live in the same uh, region in uh, in the uh, so-called Soviet Union those times. And um, uh, we learned about their lives, how they became as uh, cosmonauts. And uh, today we're having the first event with uh, our guest speakers, uh, Agata Maria Kolodkalajewczuk, if I pronounce Yes, thank you, from the Analog Astronaut Training Center. Uh, the Cypriot Analog Astronauts, Evan Rosciodosiu, Gostandinos Trujas, and Laura Kaiser. And we are going to talk about the subjects uh, we talked about earlier. And um, uh, tomorrow we have uh, another event. Uh, the, um, uh, it's going to be another live uh, podcast pot.com with a very famous presenter uh, for Cyprus, Yannis Dianellos. It's a worldwide uh, podcast. Uh, many people from abroad listen to this podcast and it will be also live on radio. So if you have an application, Classic 99FM, download this from the Android apps, you can uh, follow the podcast. And uh, on Tuesday, we have the closing ceremony here at the Gideon Platinum Observatory. We have some uh, special guests and the ceremony will be covered by the national uh, broadcasting uh, station, CYBC, Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation. And of course, we have the NASA International Space Up Challenge this weekend, a very busy weekend, we, <laughs> a very busy week for us, uh, 7th and 8th of October. Uh, this event will be hosted in Limassol uh, by the, international, the IMS uh, private school in collaboration with us and sponsored by uh, us and uh, the Rotary Cosmos uh, and, uh, Club. And uh, in this project, there are 31 uh, projects that uh, pr challenges for the students or the, um, or the scientists to achieve some uh, uh, related uh, applications or find some solutions or these 31 uh, projects that are recommended. And of course, anyone could also suggest their own project to develop, who, which will uh, also match the industry and give a final product. So the theme for the West Space Week this year is space and entrepreneurship. And uh, this theme celebrates the recognition of the growing significance of the commercial space industry in space and the increasing opportunities for the space entrepreneurship and also the new benefits of space developed by space entrepreneurs. So uh, we need to encourage people to start looking space-wise, have to develop um, 
technologies, and especially now with the, with the so-called miniaturization and decreasing large cost, which means that all the new machinery, all the new technologies are growing smaller and smaller and smaller. This means they become more compact, which this uh, costs, um, which means that it causes less costs for the launches. It means that it is now uh, feasible, it's possible for a small business to create their own satellite. We have the CubeSats or any other small satellites that could send their own projects. Uh, created by entrepreneurs and to receive some new valuable data for um, the general use for governments, for industry and for the general public. Also, the, one of the themes and one of the main targets, the main mission of this uh, West Space Week is to inspire the students worldwide to study science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And now uh, we added A as well, STEAM, we call it science, technology, engineering, art, but we call it astronomy and mathematics <laughs> and business. And uh, offer space companies the opportunity to recruit the workforce needed for the expanding commercial space industry. It will also serve as a forum for important discussions on the transition of low Earth orbit to a more entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ecosystem. Now, this is a big topic that we have to discuss uh, separately. Uh, but we want to encourage our youngsters to uh, get involved with the area of space and space exploration. And this is a good job done already by the AATC and other uh, analog astronaut uh, centers. Uh, and uh, also we have this uh, examples from Cyprus, our Cypriot analog astronauts, that we are given the opportunity by the analog astronaut training center um, to uh, expand this. Now, what is a space entrepreneur? So it's um, it's a visionary. So you have to use your own innovations to develop something, to commercialize some space opportunities, and uh, to combine to combine your technical expertise uh, with business and uh, the potential of uh, of building a sustain sustainable ventures, and also. Uh, you could also demonstrate uh, perseverance in the face of challenges. And uh, we have a lot of examples of space entrepreneurs uh, which already uh, succeeded uh, with their startups. And here we see some startup uh, success stories that they actually uh, developed something and it is used in industry. And uh this gives a lot of opportunities to the youngsters and new scientists uh to develop their ideas and uh get the job uh that will offer to the community to the society um, in space exploration in satellite in the size most satellite revolution earth observation and analytics so of course we get a lot from uh, Earth observation uh, satellites, the so-called remote sensing is really valuable, especially for, with all these uh, natural disasters that occur. We have a lot of help from these uh, systems, and usually in uh, uh, the NASA space app, we have a lot of them to be developed every year. So, uh, in this uh, science cafe, we have. Uh, um, an example of uh, what we already mentioned. Uh, they serve, the, all of the guests serve the purpose of the space and entrepreneurship, which is the theme of the Space Week. Uh, and uh, we have to, we are going to discuss uh, with the director and the actual astronauts, the projects and the benefits that they received, the science center, uh, the AATC, uh, received and what it, it offers back to the society. So, uh, our friend and colleague, uh, Agatha Maria Kolodzeschuk, and uh, I have some pictures from her installed from your Facebook profile, my friend. <laughs> Thank you very much. You. And um, uh, we have some pictures here. Uh, I, we see her in uh, zero gravity in the International Space Station. Etc. Uh, so um, 
She is a director of the Analog Astronaut Center, and she's in the Center of Technology as well in the Academy of uh, Gornisko Hodnica, and a lot more. Agatha, would you like to tell us some, a few things about yourself, please? I think, George, uh, you already introduced me very nicely. Thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, wonderful event. Thank you, Cyprus. Thank you, Analog Astronauts. It's really a pleasure to be with you tonight and to inspire um, young people, but not only young people, everyone who wants to do hard things, who wants to, um, to be better and to make this world better and to reach the stars. So I hope that we will all together have a great time this evening and the whole week uh, that is coming um, for us. Should we start? Uh, yes, I will uh, also go to the next guest, Mr. Evan Rosco-Rosiu, <laughs> uh, our mechanical engineer, and I'm sure he was commander in many missions, as I heard. He also helped uh, Constantinos in his first mission, and uh, we see this very famous satellite dish in the back, <laughs> and a lot of pictures. Evandros, would you like to say something about yourself? Can you introduce yourself to us, please? Yeah, hi everyone. I know to see you. You introduced me pretty well. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having us tonight. Thank you for organizing uh, the nice, these nice talks and especially for this week. Um, I totally agree with what Agatha said. Uh, it's never too late to follow your dreams uh, or uh, neither is ever too early. Um, especially in Analog Astronaut Training Center, you can apply and uh, join us to the to this, let's say, revolutionary path on uh, changing the world, uh, reaching the stars and making uh, a change in the space field. Thank you very much, uh, Andros. Our next uh, analog astronaut that was supposed to be tonight with us, and unfortunately, she sent her apologies for having uh, not being able to be here, is our beloved Eleonora Kaiser. We spent a lot of time, our young astrophysicist, and uh, she knows we love her a lot. And she was uh, the first Cypriot woman uh, astronaut, analog astronaut. Uh, she joined many missions, the ATC and the Lunar Race. And um, she's a very innovative person. She is uh, uh, very well, she knows very well her uh, subject and she really enjoyed the missions. And um, uh, she also comes as here as volunteer at the uh, Gideon Planetary Observatory. And uh, we presented her to at school. She taught about her experience in the Analog Astronaut Training Center. Uh, Evandros did the same as well last week. He came, he helped us fundraise for um, uh, uh, for people that actually for small children with cancer. And it was our 16th uh, year of uh, offering this charity and we were awarded the um, uh, we got an award, received an award from the um, uh, foundation and uh, it was given to us by the um, uh, Deputy Minister of the Innovation and the Space uh, uh, Office of Cyprus. And uh, I got the chance and when I grabbed the chance, I got him on stage. <laughs> I presented him and uh, also I talked about Constantinos and uh, uh, Eleonora and about our analog astronauts. And, they promised that they will support them and promote them in the uh, national challenge and so on. So it was a great uh, experience. And uh, uh, I would love to say, Agatha, here that they, they all got so wonderful experiences and unique experiences in your initiative there that they are uh, so enthusiastic when they talk to people and the people ran after them. Uh, they were grabbing Evandros all the time to come back and go to this uh, show, to this TV show, to this uh, podcast, etc. And um, the same with uh, Eleonora, Constantinos is still in England. <laughs> we have this experience when he comes back. So, and this is uh, the third uh, analog astronaut. He is with us tonight, Constantinos Trujas. 
unfortunately from the name you can understand he's my son we cannot hide it <laughs> and uh, um uh, I think Agatha will, Gostandino, would you like to present yourself? He's uh, studying biological sciences in Leicester. He's into genetics and he's into extreme uh, uh, things as well. And he had an extreme experience as well, a unique experience. Uh, but please uh, introduce to us yourself and we'll talk about your unique experiences and your experiences in the center after Agatha. Um, hello, everyone. I'm not sure if you can hear me well. Um, as our host has graciously uh, introduced me, I am his uh, first son. I am Costantinos. I am currently in the University of Leicester studying uh, genetics. Um, and yeah, not really much to say. Uh, I think um, uh, George Trujillo has recalled all the information about me. Um, as much as possible um and when he was uh referring to the uh special uh special experience he was um referring to uh me being the first uh analog astronaut to do a solo mission uh which i am so thankful for uh agatha for actually going through with the mission uh and i do understand that these missions are expensive and uh very difficult to run and uh, making the decision to run it for just one person without knowing how that person is going to fare uh, in isolation by themselves. Uh, I'm completely thankful uh, for Agatha and uh, the Animal Astronaut Center uh, uh, from Krakow for this experience. And uh, yeah, uh, nice to meet you guys. Uh, so anything else, we'll, uh, I'll pass the mic back to uh, our host. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dinos. Now, Agatha, the stage is yours. Please present to us your beloved analog, uh, may, maybe I'll say our beloved uh, analog astronaut training center because it's uh, part of our life now for many years. We are uh, celebrating, we celebrated this year the 16th year, uh, year anniversary, 15th year anniversary. We are running on the 16th year. Uh, of the um, actual operation of our science center here in Cyprus. Uh, uh, we are proud to be national coordinators for uh, almost all the many important uh, global uh, events, uh, United Nations West Space Week, NASA Space Apps, uh, asteroid search campaigns, uh, Asteroid Day, and many, many more. And uh, we are... Uh, we, we are the pioneers here in uh, sharing uh, the knowledge about astronomy and uh, science outreach, promoting here in the island on the island, and uh, we are proud of that. And uh, we were the first to develop the Gideon Astronomy Academy seven and a half years ago. It's still successful. Some of our uh, students uh, received gold medals in the uh, international. Olympia for uh, astronomy and astrophysics. Some of them really, really uh, achieved bronze medals, other honorable mentions, also in mathematics and physics. So we are very proud of them. And we also discovered we uh, bring, we do citizen scientist uh, projects. So all these guys, we want to embrace them to our uh, citizen scientist projects and uh, get them in real scientific work and discover with us some new asteroids. We already have discovered six provisional asteroids with NASA projects with the uh, Hart Simmons University. And uh, from other campaigns, we have another 663 preliminary discoveries. So we are waiting for the territories to be confirmed to become provisional. And we are so proud of it as well as our other uh, archaeoastronomy presentations and many more. So we want to have a, a cooperation with your uh, this an open presentation, an open proposal. And we talked about it. Uh, we kind of discussed it through our messenger uh, course in chat, and hopefully we're going to have the first official collaboration with our uh, um, science center and the AATC. So. Uh, Agatha, please uh, tell us all about the AATC and the excellent job you're doing there promoting science and getting these new great minds into the 
for the, uh, with always helping to the development and evolution of the human race. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Thank you very much, George. Thank you very much for uh, for invitation. And today I would like to tell about projects and benefits of Analog Astronaut Training Center. Um, I was already presented uh, nicely by George, but uh, maybe this is important for you to know why we are doing this. It's uh, simply because we are geeky scientists. I mean, I'm a neuroscientist and I love to work with humans. And my partner is an engineer who always dreamt about astronautics and bioastronautics. So he's doing everything to become, to become an astronaut. And together <laughs> we made a symbiosis and we created Analog Astronaut Training Center. Um, also, it is very important that we were both working in European Space Agency for two years uh, in uh, previous years from 2015 to 2017. And this showed us that in the future, humans will be flying not only on the orbit, but also on the cislunar orbit. And, and there will be new, uh, you know, Uber to space, new taxis to space. So we have a wonderful uh, private SpaceX uh, seven-person uh, taxi to space. Sorry for this uh, uh, simplification, but it is something like this. And we have more and more people that can fly. The prices will be lower. We still have no simple propulsion system, but people, thousands of people on this planet are working on that. And of course, our dream is to expand our civilization. Uh, the moon will be the next continent of our planet and the uh, like a station between Earth and all solar systems. So it will be very uh, cheaper, very much cheaper to launch rockets from the moon where the gravity is much, much lower. And then we will need much less fuel. So we decided to create analog bases in Poland. Why in Poland? Simply because we have lands here and it is private investment. So we don't have any grant for this. We didn't ask anyone. Um, and here is the brief history of Analog Astronaut Training Center. First, we were gaining know-how. It was 2016. We were just working at European Space Agency and we decided to create a laboratory to simulate uh, spaceship conditions. And this was Mars, Mars Base, which was Modular Analog Research Station in south of Poland. And this was the part of lunar space that it was moved. So all this habitat that was built in 2016 in uh, Zepiennik, it was moved to north of Poland, to Piwa, and now it became a lunares. Our friends, they said that they have a free hangar after the uh, military airplane. And it was a great, uh, great place to do EVAs in isolation from sunlight. So we were really loving this site and we moved uh, Mars base to Lunares, to, to Piwa and it became Lunares. But um, it was very far from where we are living. We live in Kraków in south of Poland. Um, the base was in north of Poland. So we decided to split activities and we moved back to south of Poland. So now AATC has the base in south of Poland, the same place as Mars in 2016, and we started our missions. Uh, and I wanted to proudly say that in this year, this year is very special for AATC uh, for many reasons. Uh, the, one of the, the most important reasons is that we opened Habitat to Zero. We launched it and we already organized uh, the third junior space camp here. 30 people, 30 young people were trained in STEAM, in STEAM, not in STEM, as you mentioned, George, in July 2023. And it was also uh, the place for the fifth already organized by us, Rocket Workshop, again, 30 people in August. So this facility is far from civilization. It means that we have no electric, electromagnetic pollution of the sky. We can do a 
wonderful astrophotography. I don't want to show you this because we have no time, but we uh, make here amazing photos. People are sleeping outside the habitat. So we can sleep under the, you know, billions of stars. So it is the best hotel on this planet. And people love to sleep there, especially in summertime. It is very, very warm and it is very nice. We have here 3D uh, laboratory. We have four 3D printers. We have conference room. Uh, we have even exhibition uh, hall, foyer, we call it. Even it is still very, very simple, very basic. Um, the atmosphere is very scientific. We have machine to clean the water. It is very professional one from the hospital. So we can basically clean even urine to convert into drinkable water. We have sterilizers. Uh, we have a special air ventilated workshop for resin um, um, manipulation. So, if, for example, if we create some rockets, we, if we create some models, we need some glues, some resins, uh, some polyurethane um, um, solutions. And these are very toxic organic solutions. So we need to have very good air ventilated uh, room and we have it. Also, we have Electrolab. We have six stages with uh, soldiering, uh, yeah, soldiering stages and all electro electric, uh, yeah, components. Then we have a uh, Biolab. Uh, there is a plenty of space you can see on this photo from the drone. Uh, of course, we are doing uh, drone certifications for people, for kids already from 15 years old. They can have a regular certification here in Poland. Uh, so we do sport, we do integration, night games, and of course astronomy, because not so far, it is just one kilometer from this area, we have my father's uh, private uh, astronomical observatory. Already here we launched two stratospheric missions, we launched three times rockets uh, from this uh, area. And now we are uh, developing, um, you, you know, we are so far from civilization that we can create I don't want to say bombs, but we can teach young people how to uh, be careful with propulsion systems because, of course, they want to experiment. And we know that this is dangerous. So it is better to teach them how not to, you know, um, make some terrible damage with the body and how to operate these dangerous uh, components uh, safely. The habitat itself, so so Habitat to Zero, I just gave you a big introduction because we are very proud of it. We we did a huge job. Uh, we had to take a loan. It was a really big financial uh, investment uh, for us. And it is, uh, still we feel this pain. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but fortunately, all the time, and we are very proud of it. Mm, this is another very meaningful thing for 2023. We are just finishing uh, 69th analog mission. And in the next week, we start 17th analog mission, 70 analog missions. We organize in this very tiny habitat, AATC, which is a simulator of a spaceship, 57 square meters, extreme isolation, both Evandros and Constantinos and Eleonora. So not both, all of them, they were here and they experienced this harsh condition. What is special here? Well, we tried to treat this uh, habitat. This is a normal wooden house, you know, 100 years old wooden house, but it was adapted to, uh, to become a laboratory that we can control environmental parameters, as you can see here, the monitors for emission control center. We see um, all types of sensors uh, giving data. And we have very, very many data from each mission. So we can compare one mission to another. This is great. Uh, here you can see what kind of what kind of sensors do we use. They are commercially available, but, but, we have plenty of students who are testing their prototypes to create a smart uh, sensory system of the isolated spaces. So we create sensors by our own. And also we are now starting to patent these sensors. So we just uh, submitted the patent for the sensor to monitor air purity. 
uh, because we want to know how much in isolation we have we are exposed to microbes. So we develop the sensor. But here you can see how we can manipulate data with the sensors. For example, here we can see the illumination of the habitat module. We have a special sensors. You can see here the drawing. And you can see from day uh, zero of the mission to day six, the illuminance of the, the time. So we see how astronauts are working, how much light do they use. These are all missions that we did, uh, and they are not only in AATC, in, you know, in the, the, the Habitat 1.0. These missions are also from uh, Mars, from Lunares that we organized because we were organizing uh, Lunares missions in the beginning. And of course, the, uh, the missions that, that were organized in the Habitat uh, AATC. Now we can say that we trained more than 250 students and we have more than 50 publications because, because now they tell us that we need to have um, high quality publications. We are producing them now. Now, after 70 missions, we want to make a great change um, of our um, like uh, recognition. So we have now enough data, we believe, to have the enough statistical power to compare all the missions and to write, to create very nice, relevant, very interesting and high quality publications. So what we say here about publications, these are mostly the conference proceedings. Uh, for example, now we probably you know there is a big conference uh, in Azerbaijan, International Astronautical Aeronautical Congress. And Sara Solbiati, you can see her here on the top. She's presenting our paper. Um, she made a wonderful studies with her Italian team on these movies and sensors that you can see here. And we were testing these sensors both during pre-training before the mission in cryo chamber in minus 120 degrees three minutes, our analog astronauts were exposed. And then we were analyzing them during the whole time in the habitat. Our habitat is unique in the world because of standardized emergency simulations. This will be also described in some of our publications in the future, but we can manipulate the environment inside the habitat to reach very high levels of CO2. And this you cannot do anywhere else. So this is kind of interesting how people react to this environment. And also we correlate the emergency simulations with space weather. So we adapt, we teach people how to observe the space weather using uh, mobile applications, using uh, data found in the internet. And then, of course, they need to measure many things. They need to process some tasks. Here you have some results from uh, several missions. Uh, E1 means expedition one, and you have in each column column different expedition. And we can we can compare one mission to another, uh, considering several parameters like uh, water drink, like uh, urine, like uh, how many minutes of shower the crew was taking, the total distance of of kilometers that uh, that crew was uh, doing, the cycling distance, running distance, all burned calories, um, the body weight uh, difference from the beginning of the mission to the end of the mission. And of course, the average hour slept. This is very well known habitat that you don't sleep here. Mm, usually you are very sleep deprived. And this is also very uncommon. Many people tell us that this is not good. <laughs> but we say, but we want to make you some changes in the nervous system. And you need to do some, some slight damage in order to make um, new connections. At the end of the mission, we give to our analog astronauts an overview of activities. You can see here, um, se separate the days of the mission and 
in each day we can determine how analog astronaut was moving because we have accelerometers, we have gyroscopes. So we, we see how big percentage of time during the day the person was lying, was standing, sitting, uh, moving, sleeping, everything. Of course, we have step counts per day. We have heart rates, metabolism levels, etc. Many students, they develop mobile applications or some games that can be tested on our analog astronauts. For example, here you can see subjective time perception application. Um, we try always to... Uh, to be in parallel with what is ongoing on ISS. So we read, we read, we try to follow what NASA is doing, what ESA is doing, what astronauts are training. And we try to implement this immediately to our habitat activities. Of course, we don't have gravity on the Earth, but we develop several machines that are simulators of gravity. For example, clean stats and and we try to develop different types of clinostats of course we can buy some of them another thing that we work and i know that evandros will uh, uh, was working on that is uh, kombucha biomaterials now we are very advanced level because we are already developing a special bands we are patenting this um these are, are bands with sensors and you don't need any batteries for this because we use piezoelectrics. We use a special uh, nano uh, materials with bacterial cellulose to sense uh, several parameters without electricity. And here it's just the beginning. We tried to uh, optimize uh, this biomaterial to be the best fitting for skin, uh, the best fitting to be a sensor on the skin. Additionally, we try to use kombucha consortium, which is bacteria and yeast consortium. Um, probably you read on ISS, they are now running again some kombucha studies. So this is very, very hot topic in space all the time. Uh, we try to make some um, bioactive medical creams, medical um, components to heal wounds in space to protect them from uh, biocontamination. And also we are um, trying to, to make this kombucha pasta as a glue for mixing with regolith. And, it, and we obtained quite good results already, but still we are under an R&D, you know, research and development phase. Well, several astronauts, analog astronauts are coming to us, several students, they are making their engineering or master thesis or even PhD thesis. We have now two PhD thesis ongoing in the habitat. And now I have six engineering thesis ongoing in the habitat that I'm a supervisor. So it's a lot. Uh, so here you can see some tests of uh, CO2 scrubbing using algae bioreactors. Here we can see um, our medical doctor from Italy who was trying to, um, to create uh, filters to, to purify the water out of urine, a new method. Also, he published now very nice paper. I mean, not published, he submitted the paper. So soon uh, you may read his studies in from the habitat work, very interesting studies he made. Uh, here we have a Belgian student. She already has a great projects at European Space Agency. Um, and she's working on regolith, on fertilization, the sterile rocks powder. Here we have American woman. Now she works uh, a lot with analog astronauts. She's American, very, very hardworking person, uh, microbiologists, and she is a teacher. And here she was doing also amazing work with Senorabditis elegans. Here we have the director of Acero Poland. She was creating a CubeSat in the habitat. She tried to, a CanSat, sorry, CanSat kit. She tried to create a CanSat using our tools in the habitat and she succeeded. Um, so we have, as you can see, many, many people. 
Um, we have also some invited experiments so people can give us procedures and tell us what to do and our students, they are simply uh, following the procedure and doing these experiments. Theater experiment was one of the most historical because apparently all people, they, they started to see that it is not so easy to cry two milliliters of tears. Mm. And here we see Constantinos. We have, uh, we have of course, talented people, but we have uh, now new equipment. Every year we try to get better equipment. By better, I mean more professional. Now we try to buy the, the most professional, the normally used by, by experts uh, equipment so students can really touch this kind of equipment can really try on their skin, on their body, how this machine works, how uh, they can really um, train, yes, because we are a training center. And on the right side, we had the photo from uh, yesterday, from the 69th expedition. Here, Julian created a sterile, sterile micro lab uh, for his uh, purple bacteria. Beside analog missions, we are diving. Why diving? Because if you want to be an astronaut, you will spend a lot of time in neutral buoyancy facility at ESA or NASA in Canada or in anywhere else. All astronauts train underwater. So we train too. We invite all people, all our analog astronauts to this amazing adventure to dress this suit, to use technology and to do things that our body cannot do. So we go first to deep spot. In Poland, we have 45 meter depth uh, simulator of diving. And in the next year, we start analog missions in underwater habitat in Aquarius Reef Base in Florida. We wanted to build our own underwater habitat but now we see that it is faster, better, easier, safer, etc., etc., etc. But faster is number one to create these underwater analog missions in collaboration. And Americans they love to collaborate, and they invited us on board. So in from the next year we will have analog missions underwater, which is so wonderful. And here also you can see um, Matt is uh, now working with Project Possum, American um, similar group to ours. They are much more experienced, much more advanced. And Matt is now running two courses for Project Possum. And these are our suits because we are developing flight suits again with collaboration. And this is our flight suit, pressurized flight suit from November this year. This pressurized flight suit will finally come to Poland from America. Uh, so these underwater flight, suit, flight suits we already have in Poland and we can train in deep spot, uh, what I showed you, but this one we will have from November this year. And of course, from November this year, another thing, we have now um, a new access to human centrifuge in Poland. Um, you know, this centrifuge, uh, military centrifuge, was for training jet pilots on MIR, uh, on a, sorry, MIG, MIG uh, uh, jet planes. But because of all issues, what are which are happening now, they converted the capsule into F-16. So it was a modernization of the centrifuge. We had no access for several months, but now we are running a big, big project projects, several projects, we got grants. Um, so we will definitely run and um, and we will seek for uh, candidates who would like to, uh, to be centrifuged on this amazing machine. I see two yeah. on the screen and maybe three if you include. What? Them. I have two and candidates on the screen, maybe three with me. And that's all. I, I finished. I finished no, now. No, I mean, no, I mean, we have two candidates for the centrifuge. Evan ah, you have. Very good. Evandros and Constantinos and maybe me as well. Please come. I, I, I also want to go. We will all uh, vomit together. <laughs> <laughs>
No, but seriously, uh, we will uh, we will have uh, places, and we we are seeking for strong people like you. Uh, I know Evandros already, Constantinos. I know that they are healthy and they can manage. Uh, but George, you look also quite good. So please come. Uh, <laughs> please I tried come it to before. Us. I tried it before in the Alabama space camp. Oh, you tried already? I did, yes, I did. Uh, it, it visited uh, Budapest and I did the first uh, one day uh, astronaut training center. Uh, it was an astronaut training center, the first stage. It was uh, centrifuges, it was this uh, which goes around like the balls. And um, I have the video online as well. And uh, it, it was really hard to keep the eyes open because you should have had your head at the back and keep your staring at the same point without closing your eyes. And these NASA trainers said, keep your eyes open. She, she was shouting at me. And because if you if you lose your concentration for a second, you're going to faint. So it was really it yes, was probably. really impressive. Um, Matt was only here uh, centrifuged because I never had possibility. But now we wrote a big grant, so we will uh, we will have yeah we will have access for sure. We already have discussions for people for uh, from abroad. Uh, you need to wait one month because this is military device. So you have a one month screening uh, that for sure you are safe. But besides this, everything is okay. And they are very, very friendly and everything is super professional. You are uh, checked by, by medical doctor just before the centrifuge. So, uh, and of course, during the centrifuging, you are under constant medical uh, control. So it is not a problem. Yeah, so with that, I wanted to thank uh, you all. We are collaborating with uh, European Space University, with Space Technology Center, of course, because I'm working there. Uh, now I'm making my professorship uh, in this university. And uh, yeah, and, and welcome, welcome to collaborate with us, welcome to, um, to join us. Uh, and we are always open, we are flexible, we are apolitical. We just want to do good science, good job, and to inspire people. Thank you so much. Excellent. Excellent ending. Yes, we are the same. And uh, we are concentrating to uh, doing science and uh, also <laughs> political. And uh, it's uh, devotion and passion which brings success. And we of mouth, of course. And... Uh, people looking at the results. And uh, really, congratulations for all, uh, all, all the things you're doing. And- um, Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Now, I would love to hear Evandros and tell us a unique experience that you had there, something that you liked the most uh, doing at the AATC. And then I'll ask, uh, I will, uh, I will ask the uh, same question with to Costantinos, and then Agatha, maybe you can, uh, you could also talk to us about something extreme. <laughs> Evandros. Uh, well, everything that Agatha said is uh, amazing, uh, being on the other side, being uh, an analog astronaut, but also being on the... Um, um, helping in the um, in the AATC as let's say part of the mission control. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, I now know a lot of things. Uh, thanks to Agatha, we also uh, she gave the, the the organization gave me also the opportunity to be uh, present in some uh, very prestigious conferences like the Melissa conference in 2022. Um, <clears throat> And I was uh, part of a bigger experiment about kombucha. Um, I do have a small presentation that I can share and uh, say a few things. Uh, so this is just uh, a little bit uh, a preparation of uh, my mission when I did uh, the first mission the analog, uh, in the Analog Astronaut Training Center. This is my team. Uh, what is uh, the most unique, I would say, is that uh, we are 
uh, six, uh, sorry, we, we are, um, yeah, six people from uh, five different continents for, uh, with four different religions, with uh, four different uh, nationalities. Um, <clears throat> we called Astra 45. Um, this is uh, a little bit uh, who we were in the mission. You can see different countries, different uh, uh, roles. Uh, it was me and Alexia from Cyprus. Um, and now I want to talk to you a little bit about more detail about the mission. So the most important, one of the most important things since uh, the health, uh, as uh, Agatha mentioned, um, the, the, a good thing or the, maybe the most important thing is to check uh, astronaut, analog astronauts in those ex extreme environments, how they react, how they are changing uh, body-wise, mental-wise, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's why my friend Danny, uh, he was the crew medical uh, officer and he was taking uh, all the necessary measurements every day to, to see all the data that you, that you saw earlier in Agatha's presentation, including uh, the urination, which was a bad experience to urine in a bucket. <laughs> but uh, I know uh, we did it for science. We did it for science. So I, I can accept that. Uh, next, uh, what we what was really interesting is uh, we had, uh, let's say, a pet. Uh, it was named after a Polish name, which I have a very hard time to pronounce. Uh, but uh, I know for sure Chant. that... Uh, it was Chant. Chant. Uh, I know for sure. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to, for us, uh, especially for um, young people like myself uh, as a mechanical engineer, uh, to essentially... Uh, get some hands-on experience on how you can work on a Mars uh, on a simulated Mars rover. We're able to check both the software and the hardware. How you check the cameras, how you pick up things, um, and, and it was really interesting. Uh, of course, we had a lot of uh, different smaller experiments going on, experiments that they came from the crew themselves, but also experiments that they are uh, made by external uh, principal investigators that uh, the Analog Astronaut Training Center is collaborating with. Uh, Agatha has mentioned they are doing a lot of research uh, papers and publications. Um, I will encourage all of you to check uh, the web their website to see uh, everything related. Um, one of the most uh, big, let's say, um, <clears throat> experiments, it was on hydroponics. Uh, hydroponics, as you might know, is they are very important in space uh, due to the um, less, let's say, um, uh, hardware that they need. The technology is rather simple. And uh, with that, we focused mainly with my mission, uh, what kind of uh, microorganisms and bacteria can uh, potentially grow uh, in such hydroponic systems. So these are some of the pictures that we took during our, um, during our mission in the hydroponics water to, to essentially analyze that. Uh, moving on, my uh, on oh, my personal experiment, along with all these experiments that I mentioned earlier that we had to do during the mission, it was um, the kombucha, uh, which uh, it was mainly about the outgassing and how kombucha can uh, essentially change, um, let's say, in manners of weight, in the hydration, and so on and so forth. Um, it was a, a bigger, sorry, it was a smaller part of a bigger experiment, uh, and uh, it, I'm glad to be part of uh, such a continuation now. Uh, the Analog Astronaut Training Center on Parenting, uh, they are um, creating this uh, type of clothes, uh, which can really revolutionize uh, space, uh, let's say, clothing. Uh, these are some of the measurements that I was taking through. Uh, you can see also the vacuum chambers. You can see the ultraviolet um, ceiling box. We, I want to point a little bit of the, uh, let's say, the focus on the 3D printing. One of the main things is that we had um, a 3D printer available in the habitat uh, where the astronauts were called to put down their imagination, their problem solving skills in order to find solutions on how they can solve um, small problems. For example, in the left pictures, you can see the simplest situation. We didn't have a button holder, but we had the, the button and uh, the cables that we wanted to connect. We just, um, let's say, created something 
looks more 3D printed. So it's nice to put things, um, let's say, from theory into action. So being in our Logastron training center it helped me a lot to, uh, let's say, um, make my uh, way of thinking a little bit more creative, a little bit more practical, uh, and I'll be forever grateful about that, as I was very encouraged to do so. And uh, this is um, the, last, the last picture that I want to show you um, about, the, about the mission. Uh, essentially, it's like a small memory museum uh, at the end, at the corner in the habitat. And uh, all these batches are all of different missions. And what I wanted to point out is how um, we have a continuation. As Akata said, uh, we've been uh, 69 so far expeditions. We are moving into the 70th, 70th one. And uh, this shows how much effort, how much time, how much dedication it takes. And uh, we are there doing this. Uh, as, as Evan Ross have been part in both sides, uh, for a long time and being part of something so big, something so nice that you can help, uh, you know that you are making the difference and uh, you know that essentially uh, you have a chance uh, if you want to become an analog astronaut themselves, people that they are looking at, uh, at this presentation right now, whether you're too old, let's say, or whether you're too young, you can still um, make sure that you can apply, make sure that you can get more information, be part of this uh, change, be part of um, of uh, making space accessible for everyone and uh, continue following your dreams, follow your passion and join us into this journey uh, to reaching stars. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, I This is, was just a presentation about uh, what, uh, what I have done so far in the Analog Astronaut Training Center as an Analog Astronaut. And uh, I'm sure with the gears come, I will always be here, be, um, let's say, supporting uh, the, the, um, the habitat. Uh, Agatha and I, we have a very good relationship. Uh, she has been uh, an amazing, uh, an amazing, uh, let's say, inspiration. I don't want to say boss. I don't want to say head because she's truly an inspiration. She's always uh, pushing me to to do more stuff, to to get involved. And now that's why we are calling more people every day, especially from Cyprus, from countries that let's say we have um, less accessibility to space. Please hop on and take this journey with us um, and uh, become an analog astronaut or become a, a principal investigator, connect with us through the Mission Control Center. Uh, it's a great opportunity and a great, um, experience for everyone. And I'm sure Cosandinos uh, can tell you more uh, since his uh, expedition was uh, just um, two, oh, yeah, almost two months ago. Uh, he knows uh, and he remembers a lot more than I did uh, uh, one and a half years ago. Cosandino, please, your stage is yours. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Evandros. Uh... Uh, Agatha has to enter in another meeting and she sent uh, thank you to everybody. We have another friend joining from Australia. Thank you, Joy, for joining. And um, uh, she said she said that uh, you've helped a lot. Uh, also, you can read in the, in the chat uh, what she wrote. She wrote it to everyone. So she's thanking you public, in public for the good work you're doing and helping for the ATC. And, uh, um, sorry, can I add? Yes. Sorry for interrupting. Can I add something? Uh, because, um, I think Agatha didn't mention a lot about it. Uh, she just put at the last slide, but I think, um, it's truly amazing. Um, so she posted the, um, the email of her, but I will just share my screen one more time and I will show you, this is their website and our restaurant training center, you should definitely check out for the analog astronaut books uh, and everything. Here you will find all the publications and books that um, uh, this habitat has to offer and uh, is truly remarkable and you can get a really nice taste on how you can make the difference, how you can change the world 
from just um, going on a eight week, uh, a, a, sorry, eight days uh, mission. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, but I excellent, thought it was really important to you, say that. I had I had plenty to do so because I saw it as well, and I'm also waiting for the new publication because. She mentioned, she mentioned about the new publication on the red to Constantino, so I'm waiting for it. And uh, I'm really impressed with your passion. Keep up the good work, Evan. You are excellent. Thank you very much for the kind good words. Uh, with people like you in the in in uh, Cyprus and space industry, it really makes us, uh, us uh, young uh, pioneers to have hope, have uh, passion, and uh, keep working for the best and doing as much as we can uh, and thank you for the support and everything and, and for there inviting us tonight. There's an excellent comment from our friend Hatzred about your motivation, guys, etc. Mr. Constantinos Trujillas, we all know we had you two times before the mission, once after the mission, but you didn't, you kept your mouth closed. You didn't tell us about details and this unique experience that Agatha was telling me through uh, message all the time they were impressed uh, with your psychological uh, uh, with your, your psychology uh, it was uh, with the results and this unique experience that you had that they were uh, really shocked with the 19 hour power cut with the increased level of carbon dioxide and they wanted to get you out they couldn't well, what what happened can you tell us um your own experience before that let's let's uh, end the session with that uh, unique uh, experience <laughs> um before i get into it uh, i just want to thank uh, evandros uh, for his amazing presentation he really uh, racked up a lot of information about the whole uh, uh the whole operation and everything uh really great uh, presentation evandros thank you for even passing me the mic um Kind of unfortunate, you can't really tell us about your experiences since it was uh, one and a half years ago. I, I would be really interested to hear how you uh, handled the situation. Obviously, two different uh, things. I was solo, you had a group. So, uh, And to be honest, I um, since I did this mission in isolation um, and have not yet done this mission with, uh, you know, a, a crew, a proper crew... Um, just speculating, I would say that maybe with the crew might be more difficult, especially um, organizing the people. Um, but uh, that would be a difficulty in the psychological sense, um, maybe more stress because of all the people. But at the same time, having more people, you get more tasks done. Um, everything would uh, run more smoothly, I guess uh, I should I should point out. But um, <laughs> from my experience being solo, um, obviously Agatha did not do anything to patronize, uh, patronize me or try and make me, uh, you know, <laughs> go insane in the actual enclosure in, in, in the sense that I didn't have uh, as many tasks to handle as other crews. But I did have my own set of tasks and obviously I needed to be on guard for everything. Now, the thing that uh, George mentioned was the 19-hour uh, power cut. So, um, surprisingly, uh, during that day, I was, like, had no clue that this was happening. Uh, I was expecting in those, like, in the, in, in, in the middle of the week or some, um, some part of the mission, I would be tested in some sort of unpredicted uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, power outages was was one of the things in the safety manual, so I had a brief read of that and everything. So power went out, complete darkness. Uh, had my uh, you know cell phones and like batteries and stuff, uh, you know, providing light. Uh, so all communications were lost. Uh, everything was completely pitch black because uh, there's there's no light entering the enclosure at all so it is complete darkness the only light you can see is the light generated from um, uh, sources such as lamps your phone screen computer screen etc um so when that happened i followed protocol so i i try to get the lights back on as well but 
tried my best. So at anything I had at my disposal, I tried to use it. Uh, when that failed, I did try and uh, contact Mission Control. Um, there was some signal coming in. Uh, so I did try to converse with them, see if this is uh, you know, planned, uh, first of all. Um, but uh, to no avail, uh, I would be getting replies and connections after one and a half hour approximately. So I would be completely alone in complete darkness trying to, you know, find myself around the enclosure with uh, well, the habitat. Uh, excuse me, not the enclosure. Where it's the same thing. But um, what I was doing during that time was basically trying to uh, unplug most devices that would short circuit, essentially, when the power comes back on, because there's a lot of power being used in uh, some of the machinery in there, uh, especially like the sensors. They are very, very delicate in terms of uh, electricity and, and, and everything they do. Um, but the sensors did remain uh, active for a couple of hours, if I am correct, according to Agatha, because we do have some readings. Um, but eventually, after approximately maybe six hours in, everything was completely off. I had no power in any of my devices. All the batteries were dead. Uh, there was completely no light in the uh, habitat whatsoever. Um... And it I was did. not part of the of the plan. Yes, it was not part of the plan. I forgot to mention. Um, I was alluding to it at first uh, with all the preparation I used to do, but um, it was not planned. So the whole thing was not at all scripted. It was pure power cut. Um, from my knowledge, it was due to bad weather, um, uh, like storms and such. But yeah, completely complete darkness until the I don't remember what mission time it was but uh, according to the mission logs it was next day so I, I did all of my tasks that I had to do as I would normally um, and eventually went to sleep I woke up to complete darkness once again and uh, so mission starts around well mission starts at zero and so around mission time I would like to say three, that's when the power came back on, um, along with the hours from the previous day. So in total, it was 19 hours of complete darkness, complete uh, loss of function of all the uh, services there. Uh, all the monitors have shut down, even the ventilation was shut down. So uh, uh, the, the breathing was, the atmosphere was very dense. Uh, not a lot of oxygen was coming in, and there was a buildup of different uh, different gases in, inside of the enclosure because uh, of the hydroponics, because of some of the cultures we have there, uh, and all sorts of uh, medical and uh, scientific instruments inside the, the habitat. So um, everything would combine and give a very, very dense and, um, you know, unpleasant atmosphere. Um... But other than that, uh, I, I I say I, I um, fared pretty well during the uh, crisis uh, or the unfortunate event. And uh, regarding my other experiences in the um, in the uh, habitat, uh, Evandros mentioned the uh, the bucket, uh, the bucket of. Uh, of uh, yellow water, but uh, I would like to also add the showers. I, I do this because the showers were just wet wipes. So you would have to uh, scrub yourself with wet wipes, plus monitor how many wet wipes you used to have a shower. And um, having a shower wet wipes is not really recommended, especially right after exercise and cardio, because you would be drenched in sweat and you'd have to uh, basically ration how how many uh, pieces of uh, wet wipe you would use, because you would obviously use the wet wipes for any other, um, you know, anything related to the uh, habitat, because we would uh, 
use a lot of different materials to do different tasks. For example, sometimes you might even use a kinchurn roll to uh, uh, grow some of your cultures, you know, like clean it up, essentially. So everything in the habitat, every, every consumable we would use is limited. And therefore, you need to be very careful where you use it, how you use it, and try and be um, as you know, as efficient as possible with everything you're doing, essentially, because um, hypothetically, you are in an isolated, uh, un, uh, how should I say, um, you are detached from any sort of help as possible in that situation, and therefore being as efficient as possible, as I said before, is the perfect way to get through this um, habitat and well this this type of exercise uh in general um but to sum it all up the, the experience was amazing it was um as uh, agatha mentioned before we they are trying to rewire some of the neurons in our brain and try and honestly it, it was a very detoxing experience uh it made me even more open-minded made me uh, consume uh knowledge much quick uh quicker uh and it gives you another view of how you should deal with your everyday life as well because you are in a, you're essentially in a program so every day there are specific types of tasks you need to do you have a very organized life in the habitat and that very that skill um gets translated very well later on once you finish the habitat um uh, that this is my personal experience. I'm not sure if Evandros, but I'm sure he is. Uh, he also did learn some valuable skills through that experience. And as I'm sure everyone else who experienced this, um, uh, well, these types of missions would agree on. Um, and yes, uh, I would definitely recommend it to anyone thinking about doing anything in the, uh, astro industry, uh, space industry, or anything, to be fair. Um, if you are able to do this, um, if you're mentally and physically prepared, uh, I would just go ahead and say, just do it. It is uh, very, very uh, productive in terms of scientific research. Um, and it is very useful for the rest of the world especially in this uh day and age where a lot of the money for uh space research is being diverted elsewhere obviously a lot of conflicts and uh, po uh, political um you know disturbances are happening globally uh, especially now and i in my opinion um organizations as the analog astronaut center in krakow are more than welcome to keep providing information, keep helping with this innovation of uh, space exploration and everything related, because um, it, it it is really needed. And um, as we are now, uh, exploration uh, to space is uh, commercially is coming uh, even closer as the years go by. And the more we know about it, the the easier and sa safer this becomes um, in the long run. And so, uh, as I was talking about before, I would urge anyone who is even slightly interested to actually just go to one of the missions uh, just to experience what it's like uh, being isolated with a crew or if there's another uh, solo mission out there and whoever uh, would like to stay isolated for, uh, for a week. Um, <laughs> They can go and do it. So, um, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Again, thank you, Evan Gross. Uh, thank. You, uh, I, I won't say uh, too many thanks to my father because obviously that is bias, especially since I am his, his son. So, um, yeah. The mic is yours, George, and uh, thank you for allowing me to have my say. You can just say thank you as I introduced to you this opportunity. And, uh, <laughs> and you can say that you call me back and you shame me for that. <laughs> so, uh, okay, no, it's good for, not for you, Gustav Minos only, but uh, I could say that um, 
every child should get this opportunity to have this experience. Every child, yeah, or, or every student, every grown up, every scientist, because uh, it's a unique experience. You have real life circumstances. You are developing technologies that are not used, that they are just innovations and they are trying to be uh, developed and involved and then applied and approved and applied. And they will be applying the field, of course, and also um, they're going to be, uh, uh, these innovations will match the industry and they, they will serve the purpose of, uh, of uh, in the area of space exploration and astronomy, etc. So, thank you very, very, very much, guys. Thanks for your time. I will see you tomorrow to the other at the other event. Before we closing, I want to share my screen to uh, again one more time. Uh, we had a meeting today with the Astronomers Without Borders. Uh, I'm the National Coordinator for Cyprus for Astronomers Without Borders as well. And on your screen, there is a link for something very innovative. Now, if you go to this, uh, to what you see on the screen, shop.astronomerswithoutborders.org slash pages slash one dash eclipse dash app, you can download the new application our Astronomers Without Borders application has developed with Celestron. Now, why? what is it important? Why is this application is important? First of all, we have this uh, solar eclipse on the 14th of October, and we have the next one in April. Uh, at the moment, this application is available only for iOS, that means for iPhones and iPads, etc., and it will be Developed furthermore for Android uh, applications as well uh, before the next eclipse. Now you can go there, you can support our organization by paying these uh, very small amounts of uh, money, I think one dollar, two dollars, I'm not sure, like this. You can download the application, especially those uh, solar chasing uh, teams, uh, friends of ours. And um, this is something unique. First of all, because you support our, our organization, our Astronomy Without Borders, uh, it's a global uh, community that I'm the national coordinator of uh, since 2010 for Cyprus. It was a global initiative after the International Year of Astronomy 2009 and after the 100 hours of astronomy where everybody shared their own experience around the world with the motto, one people, one sky, we try to leave behind any kind of discrimination and unite our knowledge and share our experiences and, of course, do a scientific outreach and uh, citizen science projects. And this application, when you download it, you also have the chance to learn everything about this, uh, this, uh, the eclipses, the next, this, uh, the next coming eclipse, all the details, but also there is something unique. You can upload your stories from any solar eclipse that you have experienced, and you can upload your own story and your pictures. So, if you even if you are not a solar eclipse chaser, or if, if you want to support, just download the application, and uh, you'll find many interesting pictures and stories from other people, but for astronomy is a really must. And I would like to remind you that we are running on the West Space Week 4th of uh, October to 10th of October. And I forgot to mention in the, in the beginning why we celebrate the West Space Week between the 4th and the 10th of October every year. The reason is that to commemorate the first uh, launch from humans, the Sputnik 1, uh, to space on the 4th of October 1957, and 10 years later, on the 10th of October 1967, it was the International uh, Treaty for Space for the use of space for peaceful reasons, uh, not only space, but the moon 
and uh, there is a rounding uh, uh, earth lower speed, lower earth speed, low earth orbit. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to say. So, uh, so uh, this week we run all these projects. Don't forget to join us tomorrow. Another podcast with our uh, our, our astronauts. This podcast will be in Greek. Um, it will be posted on pod.com. Uh, it's uh, you can access it worldwide. Uh, just visit our website at programmingcyprus.eu. Press on the link for the World Space Week, and you'll find all the links with the events there and uh, the codes. Everything is free, and it will be also um, uh, live. At the same time with the pod.com, we've been also live on the uh, Classic 99 FM. This you can go on your applica Android application or iOS application, pre uh, search Classic 99 FM. It's a red application. You can press on it. You will download it. And every morning you can listen to uh, very nice uh, broadcasting with fun. Uh, uh, and very important uh, news, but also tomorrow at uh, six o'clock Cyprus time, six o'clock UTC plus three, you can uh, listen to our podcast with our analog astronauts and our international uh, uh, Olympia astronomy and astrophysics gold medal winner, Aram Tessian. See you guys tomorrow. Thank you all for attending. Uh, just to remind you, this will be recorded and will be, this is already recorded, I mean, and will be uh, uploaded on our YouTube channel. You can share it with your friends. It will be great to see it going, uh, circulating around the net. Thank you very, very much for your contribution, guys. Keep up the good work. Evandros, uh, Ostandinos, and all of you guys that, um, you're contributing to science, that you are so motivated, that you have this passion, and you, uh, you also love to share with people and empower more people and youngsters in the world of uh, space exploration. Thank you very, very, very much as, as well for supporting uh, our organization, the Gideon Planetarium and Observatory. Thank you for being volunteers here. Thank you for being scientists for uh, for uh, helping us at the Gideon Planetarium Observatory. Thank you for everything. Thank you for being very good friends as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Likewise. Have a good night. <laughs>